Boozed and Confused is a comedy and weird topic podcast. Adult language may be used probably by me. While our episode topics may be educational in nature, we are not responsible if your children start dropping the F-bomb to their kindergarten class. Listener discretion is advised. Howdy, everybody. <laughs> Hello there. Welcome back to another episode of Booze and Confused. We're only a day late this time. And we're only a couple billion dollars short. Of what? The topic of our episode. Oh. <laughs> I'm only yeah. a couple billion short. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That that makes sense. Um, before we get into today's topic, which is all about the World Cup, because that's who we are. Uh, <laughs> the beautiful game. Yeah. The beautiful game. Yeah. We're talking about the beautiful game. Uh huh. As Matt's like sipping a fucking whiskey drink with his pinky out. Um, we just have a couple of housekeeping items and I'm going to go through them quick because we've got a lot to talk about today. Maybe we call it not housekeeping, but like. Is that triggering for like, you? Like, it, it is triggering. Yeah. Uh, we okay. should call it like, I don't know, like field management today. Okay, yeah. We're the groundskeepers yeah. for the pitch. Yeah, a couple a couple field management items today. Uh, the first being we're on all your favorite social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, Twitter for now, still TBD. We're still here one more week later. <laughs> uh, yeah, I still, have, I still have mine. I just go on to see what Daddy Musk tweets and then yeah. just look at the comments and then mm-hmm. whoever most triggers me, I just go to their profile and hate scroll and then yeah. I leave. Yep, absolutely. And uh, most people are bots. Remember that, friends. My therapist would have a lot to say about this. <laughs> um, if social media is not really your thing, you could always send us a message at uh, boozed and confused podcast at gmail.com. Uh, and we'll get back to your email within, I don't know, five to seven business days, something like that. 90 minutes plus stoppage time, uh-huh, uh-huh, maybe at uh-huh. halftime. Yep, maybe maybe at halftime. Um, the next one is if you like the pod and you want to support us, the best way that you could possibly do that is by leaving us a review and or subscribing and following wherever you get your podcast, wherever podcasts are found. I don't know what the catchphrase is these days, but we're on like pretty much every platform. Just just smash the like button. Yep. Um, leave a review. Yep. Um, yep. Send, (laughs) send me your... Social uh, security numbers. Ooh, Just kidding. Ooh, don't do ooh, that. Yeah. Don't do that. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, don't do no, that. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best part of all of this is if you uh, do any of those things, not send us your social security number. Do totally not do that. Totally could do that. Don't do could that. totally do that. But if you leave us a review or you subscribe or follow or whatever it's called on whatever platform you listen on uh, and you take a screenshot and you send it to us, we'll send you some swag in the mail. The swag is just stickers. It's boost and confused stickers. You can put them on your garbage can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know how um, when you get a new a new um, trash bin and you have to put uh, a sticker on it so they know that it's trash and it says like lawn bin or trash bin or something like lawn that. Lawn waste only. Yeah. That's exactly what a boost and confused sticker is. So they would just see the sticker and say, oh, this is trash. This is clearly trash. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last one. What are you drinking? Well, as as you said, it is a whiskey drink. I made a. a vod- it drinks a whiskey drink. It drinks, drinks a vodka, vodka drink. drink. It drinks a lager drink. drink. It drinks a cider drink. drink. He sings the songs, songs that remind him of the good times. He sings the songs that remind him of the better times. No, it's an old fashioned. It's an old fashioned. It's it's Maker's Mark. It's like my go to, like good simple whiskey. It's like a maple syrup. Uh, old fashioned. I, I think the maple mm-hmm. syrup adds a really nice complexity to it. It does. Um, the the drink is like kind of like smoky, murky looking. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the only thing that would make this better is like a stick of bacon in Ooh, it. Oh yeah. If we're gonna go like full on uh-huh. like Canadian, mm-hmm. like Smoky Mountain, not Smoky Mountains, but like a Smoky, <laughs> no, a Mountie. What do uh-huh. they call them? Oh no. Mounties the are Mounties. The... Yeah, the Canadian. Yeah. 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 Gonna go full Canadian here. Um, I would not garnish this with a cherry, but with maybe a cherry and some bacon, mm-hmm. like candied bacon. Even each other out. Yeah, it's it seems yeah. kind of sacrilegious, but I think bacon would actually go well with this. 
Yeah. But yeah. Um, I'm on break now. I'm on break as many teachers mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. And um, we're calling this slutty teachers spring break. That's what we're calling it. What is that? Who is we? And we, what does that mean? All of us. We had an email. There was a meeting about it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's skanky. Skanky oh, okay. teacher okay. spring yeah, break. Yeah, no, no, no. Now I understand. Yeah, skanky that makes a lot more Skanky teacher spring sense. break. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. I, uh, I'm drinking a rogue. It's a bat squatch. Brewing. Bat squatch. Bat squatch. It's a hazy IPA. It's delicious. Uh, there's a bat squatch on the can. I feel like we drink these every week. It's a good looking beer. It's a good looking beer. We go to Costco. We get our yeah, beers in bulk. So, so, you know, for weeks at a time, we're going to have the same brewer beer yeah. because Costco provides us that luxury. Got to get those wholesale prices, my friends, in I'll, this economy. I'll say that I, I'll know that we're healing fully when the onion. When the onions come back to Costco, I but I, I I'm gonna think bring my own onions. Low low stakes conspiracy. I know Costco already loses money on hot dogs. Uh-huh. Um, I think they were the ones who created this uh, COVID pandemic <laughs> to remove the onions. That's our that's our conspiracy now. That, that's the low stakes All conspiracy. Right. Yeah. Uh, Costco started the COVID pandemic uh-huh. so they could remove onions without looking like the bad guy yeah without looking like the baddies absolutely uh all right well we said we were going to keep this nice and short to start off we absolutely have not kept it short and maybe it's been nice that's subjective isn't it um but we're we're just going to dive right into the world cup we're diving into the biggest sporting event in the world bigger than super bowl bigger mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. NBA finals bigger than all those things. This is the biggest event in the sporting world. Do you have an estimate of how many people watched the last World Cup? Was it like 3 billion people? 3.5 billion people. B with a B, billion. With a billion. Mm-hmm. One thing I love about American sports, which I'm not the largest fan of, I, I enjoy all sports, but like. When we win a you know a, a championship in in most American sports, we call ourselves world champions. <laughs> the the New England Patriots are the world champions of football because like we're the only country. We're actually not the only country that plays American football. Mm-hmm. There's actually a tournament that hosts international teams, mm-hmm. and they play American football. But like, yes, are they the best yeah. leagues of that sport? Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really the same as it. Yeah. But but the World Cup, you can truly call yourself a world mm-hmm. champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually, Matt and I would be all over this World Cup, but it feels a bit like ucky. It's doesn't tainted. It? It's very tainted. Yeah. Very Feel, feels very a bit yucky. Bad bad feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll start off by saying I've watched maybe all of five minutes of mm-hmm. one game so far, where otherwise I would have stopped all things. <laughs> um, <laughs> And seeing as this World Cup is in Qatar, mm-hmm. um, I would watch it during school because it is playing during like normal. It is playing times, during my yeah. school hours. Yeah. Um, the only time I've watched it is to turn on the game for a coworker who we share a classroom, and then I left the room because yep. I'm bad not, vibes. <laughs> I'm not watching the World Cup. Yeah, it's hard to get into and. If you're not a soccer fan and you haven't really kept up with the headlines for this year's World Cup, you're probably wondering like what the big fuss is about. Ooh, I think I know what it is. Yeah, what is that? It's the beer. It's they, the beer. <laughs> they banned they banned beer uh, yep. to be served at the games. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's what we're talking about, right? That is what That's... we are talking about. Budweiser Gate 2022. Yeah. Um, if, for I guess like you know. Anybody who's not totally aware, World Cup only happens every four years. Like Matt said, it's the biggest sporting event in the world. Uh, the U.S. finally made it through after missing it last year, which is or last tournament, uh, which is amazing. So, like, we should be excited, right? We're doing better than Italy. Yeah, we're doing better than <laughs> Sorry, Italy. Sorry, Italy. <laughs> uh, yes, it was yeah. it was very bad feels when. Yeah. 
um, the teams that I support internationally, Italy, Ireland, and the U.S. Ireland never makes it. They're no, never they going to make it. No, They're no, never no. going to make it. Let's level set our expectations here. But when, when Italy didn't make it and when the U.S. didn't make it, um, I think it was sad for Americans, but it's like an, it's like a national tragedy for the Italians yeah. who yeah. historically are such an amazing team. And they just came off winning the European championships. Mm-hmm. So, like... Um, we haven't been watching the World Cup really, but there were some friendlies on mm-hmm. at the same time mm-hmm. as the World Cup, and mm-hmm. so I, I'm watching Italy play like Albania, Albania, or and they lose two <laughs> nil, and it's it's like them wearing the yeah. European champion badge yeah. on their kit, and it's yeah. it's like good for oh, them. Oh, you're so bad, and you're so good on paper. Yeah, offering us some good alternatives. Um. This episode, we're going to start, it's going to take us all the way back to like 2010, at least to start. Um, That's when Qatar, Qatar, however you want to pronounce it, because that is a divided household topic for us. Well, you were in the Model UN in (laughs) high school, and and I call it Qatar. Come to a shock to absolutely nobody. Uh, Yes, I was in Model UN in high school, and one of the only things I took away from it is that everybody pronounced it uh, Qatar, Qatar, whatever you want to call it. Um, So Qatar is awarded the World Cup for 2022, so for this year, in 2010. Um, Between the 50s and up until like 2002, the World Cup host country was selected through FIFA. So they like alternated between the Americas and Europe to ensure that there were no like boycotts or controversies, which obviously is working out very well now. Well, really? They <laughs> they do that. Now FIFA being of course uh-huh. the, the the organization that that runs world yeah. football. Yeah. It's the was it it's in a, sorry, it's in French. It's like Fédération Internationale de Football yeah, it's Association. It's, it's, yeah. it's the Football Association of the World. After the 2006 World Cup, they changed their continental rotation policy. And the newest host selection policy is that any country may bid for a World Cup provided that their continental confederation has not hosted either of the past two World Cups. So 2018 right. was in Russia, so that knocked a lot of countries out of the 2022 bid. Which yeah. which actually put the U.S. at like the top of the list. Uh-huh. And although we are hosting, um, along with Canada and Mexico, for the next World Cup, already confirmed, super exciting, a triple host, very cool idea. Um, Chicago got snubbed. Again, it's fine. Soldier Field is a really beautiful place, but it's not. It's not beautiful. Yeah, I think it's a great stadium. Oh. I think it's a great looking stadium. I like that they combine, you know, this like old school architecture, these like gorgeous pillars, and then a spaceship. It's my favorite stadium in the country. Don't don't come at me. You're being my, facetious. My favorite obviously, thing. Yes. My favorite memory of that place is um, going to the MLS All Stars versus Real Madrid, <laughs> yep. and uh-huh. being so high up in the nosebleeds. That the helicopter flyby for the All Star game, which are, or was it a plane? I forget. Yeah, nearly, n- nearly took my head off because yeah. that's how high up yeah. we were. Yeah, it uh, was uh, not a good time. It was pissing it was rain, very rainy, <laughs> a lot of beer. It was, uh, it was actually a great time. But I, would, I hate those upper seats. I would argue that we spent over a hundred dollars before we even got into the stadium <laughs> buying just beer. Yeah, absolutely. I carried you. I carried you out of a lake yeah. in the parking lot. We, yeah. They parked us in the middle of this like yep. giant, yep. like three foot deep puddle of water mm-hmm. in the crap Soldier Field parking lots. Yeah. And we bought, I think, three beers before we even, oh, six beers, because mm-hmm. three each, mm-hmm. before even getting to our seats. Yeah, we did. Great place. No, yeah. I'm being sarcastic, but... Um, maybe when the Chicago Bears build that glorious uh, stadium Heights. in the Arlington Heights area, um, maybe they'll be able to host proper games there. Yeah. Good Good luck to you guys. Uh, but the system changed so that the host country is 
now chosen in a vote by FIFA's Congress. That's a thing, apparently. Uh, there's like a ballot system. It's a really extensive selection process and any country can bid for the World Cup as long as they're not violating any of the rules that we just talked about. Um, so the 2018, what's kind of interesting is the 2018 and 2022 hosts were announced at the same time in 2010. So Russia obviously won 2018. Uh, Qatar was awarded 2022. The other bids for 2022 came from Australia, Japan, South Korea, and the United States. And as Matt just mentioned, we won the bid for 2026, uh, along with our uh, brethren to the north and south of us. So that'll be interesting. Super exciting. Um, We will be going to at least one game in America. Yeah, we'll see how that... I mean... It's going to happen. We're going to have to empty Maisie's like college savings. I'm speaking it into existence. We're going to do it. I'll start saving up. I I will bag groceries... I will I will yeah. deliver bags. Yeah. I'll amazing. work for Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever Great. it takes to get to one game. Great. Oh, speaking of slave labor, we're gonna get into that later in this episode. But um yeah, so so Qatar being awarded the twenty twenty two World Cup was only the second time that the World Cup would be held in Asia since the 2002 tournament, and it's also the smallest country geographically to ever be awarded the World Cup. Which is amazing. So smallest like like landmass yes, size. Yes. Also, I would argue it's the smallest population size. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I. I didn't look that up. But you're probably right. It's. It's a horrendously low number. I yeah. was. I've been listening to another podcast. Um, small podcast. Men and Blazers. <laughs> very small. Uh huh. Um, yeah. the guys from Men and Blazers have linked up with the guys from Pod Save America, and they have a great podcast called. It's like a mini like series called the world corrupt Mm -hmm. and it's basically much better than we are (laughs) uh it's much better than we dare you (laughs) first of all (laughs) how dare you uh caroline was making notes while i was playing fall guys yeah while my friend was trying to fix his computer to play it as well it didn't work out but um they are one of the smallest countries population wise as well um a number that's in my brain is like seven thousand five hundred actual citizens what something like that i'm uh, there's a seven I'm and a five fact check that i might have real time right have, now i might have forgotten the yeah comma. i think you forgot so cutter's population is just under three million are you thinking of like citizens of qatar like like citizens of qatar okay let's look this up we're looking it up uh in real time um, three hundred. Okay, so this is in early twenty seventeen. So this number may change. Uh, the total population was two point six million, with mm-hmm. three hundred thirteen thousand of them being Qatari citizens. There uh, it is. Yes. Okay. There it is. Sorry. That's the a, others are expats. That's a okay. horrendous number. I'm seven thousand three hundred and something thousand. You know, they're pretty close. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and none of this is to say that soccer isn't popular in Qatar because. It, it is. It's, I think, the most popular sport in the country. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. It's just at the time of the bid, the country had zero infrastructure in place that could support a World Cup, um, which I would say is kind of alarming. It's a little bit different than think of um, uh, the Olympics, where it's like kind of understood that you are not going to have an entire thing in place to support like ski slope jumping or whatever those are. Like soccer is a very contained sport to build infrastructure around. Uh, Olympics is a little bit different and it's understood for the Olympics that you're going to have to invest a lot within your infrastructure to support it. I, I, I recall, was it the Beijing Olympics? Yes. That which, which were quite recent in memory. Yes. Um, I remember y- you and I talking about like they had like the ski, uh, this uh, ski slope right in the middle of like factories, yeah. And they like put up like walls around yeah. it and stuff. So like, dystopian. Very. We kept using that word. That was the word. Dystopian, we kept using. because it's true. It's the same thing with the World Cup and in Qatar. If anyone hasn't seen these videos, there's um outside of <clears throat> some of the stadiums, there are literal slums, uh, but they've built these walls so that you don't see the slums from 
a majority of where people would be uh, in the stadium and around the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they also did that for for the World Cup in Rio. I was going to say that the last handful of World Cups or like like even like world events at these countries. So Qatar being the most recent, Russia, Brazil hosted um, the one before Russia. They've they've been countries that are like important to like wor- like important to the world, but the the countries severely lacked the the massive infrastructure you need you know stadiums these like massive stadiums yeah. to to hold all these people and uh, Brazil's stadiums that they've that they used for the World Cup many of them are in total disrepair now because there's just yeah. no use for them now so yeah. Brazil was also a World Cup that was um, concerning with questionable the, with the <laughs> with the rights but it, that was also what eight years ago yeah yeah it was good and i was ago. i was far less aware of like global issues yeah like i am today yeah yeah so a similar issue but I, I think you magnify the problem you know a thousand fold in qatar yeah uh so let's go ahead and just like give a look at the positives that were pitched and provided uh you know after they won the bed. There's pot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Positives and very loose quotes. Uh, all of this is a quote. I have a ton of articles from today. If you're interested in any of this, every link that I have in the show notes is fantastic. Uh, definitely give it a look and you will find yourself in a rabbit hole. FIFA stated that the Qatari bid ran on a platform of bringing the World Cup to the only part of the world previously excluded from hosting it, donating parts of Stadia to underdeveloped countries in Africa and Asia after the competition finishes, and giving fans the opportunity to watch multiple matches in one day and reduce travel expenses by being the most compact tournament to date. (laughs) We're the smallest, so (laughs) you can walk to different games. Yeah, that's that's a way to spin it, I would say. The local organizing committee is planning to build nine new stadiums and expand three existing stadiums for this event. The first stadium to be completed will be the uh, Khalifa International Stadium, due in 2016. Qatar's uh, winning bid for the 2022 World Cup was greeted enthusiastically in the Arab world, as it was the first time a country in the Middle East or North Africa had been selected to host the tournament. The tournament is expected to generate thousands of jobs with extensive infrastructure required to prepare the country to host the world's biggest sports game. Official Qatari sources have estimated that the country will spend $138 billion, Mm -hmm. which will include new motorways, a new water port, a metro system, as well as nine stadia and an extensive fan zone. Uh, One thing as I'm like reading through all of that, something that I forgot is to pull up the cost that other host countries spent on it because there's a a chart. I'll try to find one and put it in the show notes. A chart that shows the spend um, per country and cutters is just like almost off off the chart. It's it's entirely off the charts because because they began with zero when you go from zero and you try and create all these stadiums to like match the, I don't say quality of other countries, but countries that have, have established themselves in the world of, of the sport and have built these things over generations. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just like, here you go. We're, we're going to, <laughs> we're going to build all of this in 12 years. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely wild. But all of this sounds great, right? Like philanthropic efforts, spreading the soccer community, developing infrastructure, creating gerbs. <laughs> like, to, I mean, the words that you you read like just infuriate me. Yeah, to make a turd sandwich look so appealing. <laughs> Well, that's that's a good PR team for you. Uh, The other big piece of it was like bringing the world stage to a new part of the world. So like, what's wrong with all of this? Well, that's an amazing idea is is, I mean, absolutely. The World Cup should be all over the world. It it should be in the Middle East. It should be in Asia. It should be in Northern Africa. It belongs everywhere. We should have one in, in like the Arctic Circle. Next World Cup, Iceland. Do it. Let's do That'd it. That'd be so cool. Iceland is so fucking small. There's no space. <laughs> There's no space. You're built on like a volcano. Yeah. And it's like the game <laughs> might get called because you're getting incinerated. Yeah. 
but that's why it's free tickets yeah it belong no it belongs everywhere though it does it does uh i i agree with that wholeheartedly however <sighs> <laughs> the first major red flag of this entire thing is FIFA. FIFA itself is a very corrupt organization. So FIFA governs soccer around the world. They understand that just about every league in the world is currently in the middle of a season right now, with the exception of MLS. No, there there are a number of leagues that kind of follow our our system. But, like who? Uh, I, I think Ireland has has a system kind of like ours where it's it's not it's 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 not exactly like ours where we've been done for a few weeks maybe a month now yeah um but the vast majority of competing teams like club club level teams play pretty much from what uh, the end of summer l- late summer to yeah, spring like august to they take yeah. summer off yes exactly where our country in the you know with the MLS we avoid winter because half the teams would be Shit is 6 cold. feet under <laughs> 6 feet under snow uh, by the time that you get to the finals yeah shit's cold um yeah so typically world cups happen over the summer which uh is nice for all of these leagues that don't play during the summer um it avoids disruption to like almost every league in the world minus MLS and you know sometimes US makes it to the world cup sometimes they don't uh, but it also reduces injury risk to players, right? We're seeing a lot of players out right now or who uh, have gotten hurt in training or got hurt in the lead up to the tournament. Uh, I think we've seen a lot of injuries already so far, and it's only been like two days. Yeah, the, really French, the French national team, the current holders of the World Cup, uh, have have lost <laughs> a number of major players. Yeah, and they still kicked the shit out of Australia today. To be Spoilers. fair, to be fair, it is Australia. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Saudi Arabia but, beat Argentina two uh, one. Anything can happen. <laughs> well, that is hilarious. Um, Australia is one of the only teams to actually speak out about this yes. massive issue. So massive yes. respect to them, considering all of the. I don't want to say danger that people are 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 facing in yeah, Qatar, they are. but I mean, there's there's so much going down where even like just like like normal journalists are are facing issues with like recording mm-hmm. events, even though they've been given passes by FIFA, mm-hmm. but it's all gone to shit. Yeah. Once once it's an action, this is this is literally fire festival. <laughs> In in, in in football form, it's yeah. it's it, it's a travesty. It's bad, um, but because Qatar is so hot during the summer, the World Cup had to be rescheduled to November and December. Um, the average temperature, while the teams will be playing over the next like three four weeks, uh, is like mid to high eighties. Which, especially if you play in some of these European leagues, that's very hot. That yeah, is very hot. Yeah, I was going to say that the Americans, this is kind of like what we live in. This is yeah, like we're very much to used us. to this, but um the the English team is one team that stood out to me. Um like they're at training and they're suffering because yeah. 85 degrees with with humidity is Yeah. And if I remember correctly, teams were given the opportunity to go early or at some point leading up to the tournament to like acclimate to the weather. Is that accurate? I feel like I heard that. When in did passing. when did the Premier League end? What like two weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, you can really uh, you know acclimate to that. Yeah. I mean, yes, you can, but um, yeah, summer temperatures in Qatar are like a hundred degrees average. Uh, especially in like July when the World Cup usually is. It gets much hotter than that. Uh, so it's like not a great choice because who the hell is acclimated to playing in that um, besides people who live in Qatar and probably don't play in the summer? <laughs> uh, that's a big red flag. And the the heat aspect of it is a red flag we're going to see somewhere else. Oh. Um, the second is Mohammed, uh, Mohammed bin Hammam. Um, Hammam? Hammam. Hammam. Um, who was a or is a Qatari soccer official was accused in 2014 of making three million pounds in payments <laughs> to FIFA officials in return for their support for Qatar's bid for the World Cup. Um, which it wouldn't be FIFA without like just a little bit of corruption. Um, 
pretty on par, par for them. Well, no, 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 no. FIFA, FIFA is an honorable organization. <laughs> the gold um, star. When when they when they get rid of Set Bladder, mm-hmm. they solve the problem. They yeah, cut absolutely. the snake's head off. Yeah, absolutely. So we're good. We, yeah. We have Infantino now. Yeah, no, no, no. He's great. Great, great honorable man that oh, he is. Oh, God. Um, a publication called the Sunday Times attained uh, millions of secret documents, so emails, letters, bank transfers. They got the laptop. They, <laughs> they got the laptop. <laughs> and then they got Hunter Biden. Just kidding. Um they alleged our proof of payments made to soccer officials uh, in return for their support for the cutter bid. Um, the documents also show how he was making payments directly to officials in Africa uh, to allegedly buy their support for cutter in the contest. And although the vast majority of the officials did not have a vote, um, the Sunday Times alleges that Ben uh, Hamam strategy was to win a groundswell of support for the Qatari bid, which would then influence the four African FIFA executive committee members who were able to take part in the election. So it's a little bit of like, I don't I don't really have a great analogy for that, but hopefully you get a visual of what that little corruption map looks like. Great. Okay. Yep. You I'm, seem like I'm, you're following. I'm I'm looking at you with squinted eyes. It's like if yeah. if you cover my back in money, I'll uh-huh. cover your back in money. Uh huh. Uh huh. And yeah. How I met, much yeah. money do yeah. I have to give you <laughs> for you to say yes to me? How much money? Yeah. And if all of this is disturbing to you, and you're listening, and you're like, "Wow, FIFA should really do something about this." Don't worry. FIFA looked into themselves, and they decided that they had done <laughs> nothing wrong. <laughs> Uh, we, we took a, a, a very, um, objective look at ourselves yeah, and absolutely. we think we're totally good. Yeah. Um, bald is in, bald is beautiful. <laughs> we're all very handsome over here. How are you? Oh my God. So Ben Hamam was actually banned for life by FIFA from all soccer related activity in 2011, a year after Qatar won the bid following an investigation into ethics violations around bribery for an unrelated issue, if you could believe that. This wasn't even what took him down. It was something else. Uh, but yeah, totally nothing suspicious about Cutter winning their bid. He literally invited people to a hotel and said, I have gifts for you. <laughs> I have gifts for you. If you're, what do you say? If you're too pious to accept them, well, that's fine. Yes. And the gift was literally bags of money. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> Manila like envelopes <laughs> full of hundred dollar bills. Yeah, just was like forty thousand yes. dollars each. Yes, and this was recorded. Yep, this is a bold move. This yeah. is a bold move. Yeah, yeah, forty thousand dollars each. Just bags. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Envelopes of yeah. money. Envelopes of money. That'd still be a very thick stack that's of a, hundos. That's a thick stack. That's a big that's fat a big boy. stack. That's a big boy. It's um, a gift, bro. <laughs> Just a gift. Are you too pious to accept? He speaks like a fucking NPC. <laughs> Saying that you're too pious <laughs> to accept a gift. Oh if I was God. to receive a gift and he says, "Oh well, if, if if you're too pious to accept this," I go, "This is this is uh, not a good gift." My dumbass is probably <laughs> too naive, and I'd be like, "How do I?" Tell the IRS that I have forty thousand dollars as a gift in cash. How much does the Urs need from me? <laughs> Dear Urs, <laughs> it's me again. I got you a phone call. I sent you the Amazon cards. I hope you don't arrest me. Oh my god. X O X O boozed and confused. <laughs> we pay somebody to do our taxes because we're too scared to do them ourselves and have the IRS show up at our house. And um I'm still scared they're going to show up at our house. <laughs> I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I have I did my own taxes for like... Yeah, but that was when you were single years. and you owned nothing. I do own nothing. I still own nothing. Anyways, all right. So the third thing that we're going to talk about is Sepp Blatter, which you kind of already alluded to. What a great guy. I didn't realize he's like in his 80s now, which is shocking and you know what song comes to mind is like if i could turn back time <laughs> if i could find a way um so sep ladder was the fifa president at the time of the qatari bid he resigned in 2015 just days after he actually won an election to a fifth term 
to be FIFA president. Um, U.S. authorities indicted a group of senior FIFA officials on corruption charges. So his top lieutenant, uh, Secretary General Jerome Velke, Am mm-hmm. I saying yeah, that yeah, correctly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, had transferred ten million dollars to an account controlled by former CONCACAF, CONCACAF. CONCACAF. Sorry, forgot the CA in there. President Jack Warner. That payment was allegedly part of a bribe to help South Africa secure the right to host the 2010 World Cup. So I can't. I I'm not sure what World Cup in recent history does not have some sort of corruption uh, charges associated with them i got you the 1994 world cup (laughs) best ever world cup um what's even more interesting is this month set bladder actually said that picking cutter to host the world cup was a mistake what yes did he say that he wasn't even like is he on his deathbed i don't maybe is he dying yeah he had the three ghosts of christmas visit him (laughs) the ghosts of football (laughs) past present and future it's like it's like maradona (laughs) Uh, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic <laughs> and then like Cristiano Ronaldo Jr. or something. Oh my God. Yeah. The last and arguably most insane part is this bit here, and I'm going to have like an exact quote. Well, let's go. Quote. And oh, I quote. God. According to leaked documents obtained by the Sunday Times, Qatari state run television channel Al Jazeera secretly offered $400 million to FIFA for broadcasting rights just 21 days before FIFA announced that Qatar will host the 2022 World Cup. The contract also documented a secret TV deal between FIFA and Qatar state run media broadcast Al Jazeera that $100 million will also be paid into a designated FIFA account only if Qatar wins the World Cup ballot in 2010. An additional $480 million was also offered by the state of Qatar government three years after the initial offer, which brings the amount to $880 million offered by Qatar to host the 2022 World Cup. I just can't fathom that kind of money. That is insane to me. That's, that's, some, that's some that's some big kid money right there. That's some paper money. That's so much it's, money. It's, it's a lot of money. Yeah, it's no so, doubt. No so, doubt. so much money. So, so far we've got like some bribery for the bid, which it, it seems like. And FIFA is arguably one of the most publicly corrupt organizations to exist. So I, it's not like shocking. It's kind of par for the course, actually. Um, I'd be curious how clean the North America bid for... Uh, the World Cup was for 2026. I feel like our Ooh. noses are not clean, but. <laughs> is anyone's nose clean yeah, in no. world let, politics? Let he, without uh, bribery. The first. Oh, 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 we're not quoting the Bible. Okay. Um, <laughs> let he who is without bribery cast the first, um, not ballad, but like, I don't know, like two-footed tackle the first. There you go. The first yeah. ball handler. Yeah, there you go. Um, I know what you're thinking, though. What, Not you. What am I'm I, what am I thinking? You, what am I thinking? But I'm speaking to you, the listener. You're thinking, how bad could it really be? So what if they paid for the bid? Think of everything else that comes with Cutter hosting. Philanthropy, community, infrastructure, jobs. Um, Cultural experiences. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Shit's going to get serious now. So we're going to start at the bit where we said Qatar was nowhere near equipped to hold a World Cup. Again, it's not unusual for hosting countries to have to make like expansions or accommodations. Um, But thinking of where Qatar was and the ambitious goals that they had, the goal was originally nine new stadiums, uh, expanding three existing stadiums, building an airport, new roads, hotels. That all came at a huge price. Now, the World Cup, the the setup that they have, they actually only have eight venues to play in. So six new stadiums, one existing, one temporary venue that they're going to deconstruct and then repurpose after the World Cup is over. So in February of 2021, mm-hmm. The Guardian revealed that more than 6,500 migrant workers from India, Pakistan, Nepal, and Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka had died in Qatar since it won the right to host the World Cup Mm -hmm. in 2010. Absolutely right. 
Up to the point of this report that was published in February 2021, it meant that an average of 12 migrant workers from those nations only died each week since December of 2010. So each country involved uh, that I just listed out had their own reports from their government sources that kept track of these deaths that were reported. It's important to note that the 6,500 number does not include deaths from countries that send shitloads of their workers to Qatar, like the Philippines and Kenya. And also adding on to that, the 6,500 number only counted up to a certain point of 2020. So deep breath. All right. We're going to go through a couple examples of some of these stories. Um, so uh, Gal Sin Rai, I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, was from Nepal. He was paid nearly, a th- uh, or sorry, he paid nearly a thousand dollars, thousand pounds in recruitment fees for his job as a cleaner in a camp for workers building the Education City World Cup Stadium. Within a week of arriving, he killed himself. Okay. Another worker, Mohammed uh, Sahid Mia from Bangladesh, was electrocuted in his worker accommodation after water came into contact with exposed electricity cables. A lot of these stories have more details. I'm not going to go into more details, um, but you can definitely look them up if you wanted to read them. I just don't want to get that depressing on the pod. In India, the family of Madhu uh, Bola Pali uh, have never understood how the healthy 43-year-old died of natural causes while working in Qatar, and his body was found lying on his dorm room floor. So the death toll that Qatar has is revealed in like very long spreadsheets of official data listing the causes of death, which include anything from multiple blunt injuries due to a fall from height. Um, asphyxia due to hanging, undetermined cause of death due to decomposition, which is like, holy shit. Yeah. A a, a very large number of these deaths have been dubbed like natural causes. Yes. um, When, when survivors of building the world cup have come back home and um, I actually watched a documentary uh, that kind of like chronicles. What was the name of that one? We can throw it in the show notes. Yeah. Top of the dome. Yeah. It's a it's a half hour long documentary. It's worth every minute of your time because it's talking about families. It's talking about people who survived it, uh, but not for long. Not for long. Um, one one worker that I recall uh, was talking about how the extreme heat and hours that he put in, like not being provided break not being provided I'm sorry provided enough hours of rest um going into like liver and kidney failure and is like on death's door because he has no money to pay for any kind of like you know surgery um the bodies that come home in trucks just just truckloads by the truckload just coming back it, it it was a powerful documentary that really showed the humanity of of the event. Um, it's 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 horrendous, and and the numbers don't match the reality. Yeah. Of of what happened there. Yeah. Um, like you said, the most common cause of death that they have is so called natural causes, which they often attribute to acute heart or respiratory failure. Uh, the Guardian has like this fantastic article I highly recommend you read. It's in the show notes if you're interested. Um, the data that they obtained said that 69% of deaths among Indian, Nepali, and Bangladeshi workers are categorized as natural. So mm-hmm. almost 70% of those deaths. Uh, among Indians alone, the figure is 80%. Um, other significant causes of deaths among Indians, Nepalis, and Bangladeshis are road accidents, which is 12%. Workplace accidents, which is 7%, and suicide, which is also 7%. Um, There was a report in 2019, a separate thing reported, that uh, found that Qatar's intense summer heat is likely to be a significant factor in many worker deaths, which is not shocking at all. I think uh, 100 plus degree 
uh, temperatures paired with long working hours paired with uh, poor uh, nutrition and hydration are a key to basically uh, be a slave labor work camp. So not not to mention the um, massive loans that many people took on because there are people within their own countries who work with the Qataris yep. to to work as sponsors mm-hmm. who will then pay their way to Qatar to work yep. and then impose impossibly high interest rates, yep. which can never be repaid. Yep. And the documentary, which we'll put in the show notes, um, talks to those individuals who are like, just like, yep, oh, yep, I do this mm-hmm. to feed my family. Yeah, everyone's out here trying to trying to survive. I think what's also really sad is a lot of the folks that died, um, their families either received nothing or they maybe received a quote unquote refund for what their uh, deceased loved one had paid in order to make their way to Qatar. Uh, so like the thousand pounds, three thousand pounds, whatever it was. Um, yeah, they received like no compensation for their loved one's death. Because that natural causes yeah. mark on yeah. the death certificate yeah. nullifies any mm-hmm. kind of recompense Wrongdoing that can or, be, yep. you know, received. Yeah. Yeah. And what's crazy is Cutter doesn't even dispute the deaths. Um, there's in the, the Guardian article, there's a huge section about how Cutter handles this and how they spin it within their PR. Um, they just say that the deaths are proportionate to the population living and working in the area. And they say that the workplace accidents account for less than 10% of fatalities within the group. And that's probably how they get away with paying like next to nothing for these folks who um, are, you know, surviving of the deceased. And What's also worth noting is they don't keep amazing records of these deaths and transparency is like non-existent. And it leaves a lot to be desired, if you, if you will. Um, these workers didn't just have death to fear from the heat, right? They had to deal with like wage theft, excessive working hours, obvious dangerous working and living conditions, like the guy who was electrocuted in his own fucking camp, um, physical and sexual abuse like there's there's a a huge ongoing list of issues that these workers had to deal with Anish Adhikari uh, who's a migrant worker who came to Qatar from Nepal described to PBS NewsHour some of the conditions he experienced also highly recommend you check that interview out um, also in the show notes Um, sometimes the company gave us rotten food. The fish would smell disgusting. It used to give us diarrhea. It got up to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. We didn't get the water we needed. The water we got was almost 90% ice. We asked why they did that and told them it was impossible to drink water like that. They said they froze it because if they provided normal water, water, uh, the workers would drink more. Which is what you do when you're... That is the point. Yeah. Yeah, it's the fucking point of water is to drink it drink and it. hydrate yourself and keep yourself alive. Uh, Sam Stachskal is a soccer writer for The Athletic. The Athletic. Yeah, I know. I was going <laughs> to say, I'm sure you've read some of his stuff. High quality sports writing. Um, he reported the following. Uh, A lot of these people, their passports will be taken from them upon arrival in the country. They will not be returned to them until they submit, um, until they finalize their contracts. The housing conditions, as reported, have been very, very bad in some cases. Tons of people crammed into tiny, squalid living uh, accommodations. And there's been a lot of deaths, which is depressing, incredibly depressing, especially given so many of these people got the money together to go there because they thought they'd be getting a better quality of life. They'd be able to send money home to their families. And that was very clearly not the case for many of these folks. Um, so why is Cutter doing this? What, why host a world cup? Like what is in it for them? What do they gain? I've, I've never thought of it that way. Yeah. I've, I've yeah. been very close minded. You're right. I, I have no idea. What, like what, what, is, what is the point of them doing this? Are they trying to like compete with like Abu Dhabi or something? Great point. Um, potentially, there's there's like there's a lot of speculation, right? So, 
Maybe it's that they want to gain visibility as a small nation. As I was doing this research, <laughs> um, there were a lot of things that I discovered that I was like, wow, I didn't realize this is like Qatar state-run media, or I didn't realize this is a uh, Qatar-based company. Like, for example, Be In Sports is owned by Qatar. Not maybe not like Qatar um, as a state sponsor, but yeah, I had no idea it was a Qatari company. There's just so many like little pieces that I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. And even Be In Sports didn't exist like more than 10 years ago. It's brand new. It, it feels like they've been around forever, yeah. honestly. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So like maybe maybe they want to gain visibility as a small nation. Maybe they want to gain influence in international affairs. Maybe they want to contribute to national security. Who fucking knows? I truthfully don't know. Um, one big bonus for Qatar, and this is not to say this is the only reason they're doing it, because I think it would be simplifying a very complex issue. Um, they've been using the World Cup to quote unquote sports wash their absolutely horrid record for human rights abuses. Yes. <sighs> yep. Yes. Just as China used the 2022 Winter Olympics, uh, which we all know uh, around the time of the 2022 Winter Olympics uh, in, in China, um, there were also a lot of concerns and complaints about um, literal concentration camps that they have of, uh, of Muslims in China. Saudi Arabia has funded a professional golfing league. They've just like dumped so much money into professional sports recently. And they're, and they're pulling big names, both yeah. like pundits yeah. and, and athletes. Do you remember when Mark Clattenburg went to Saudi Arabia for I remember maybe that. like two years and then that. came back? Sail into the sunset. Yeah. yeah. Mark so it's, it's funny because I see him as a, a pundit within the World Cup this year. Uh, and I just want to be like, so what are you thinking? <laughs> What's on your mind? So sports washing is an effort by repressive governments to use prestigious sporting events to like kind of burnish their international reputation, which is crazy. And it's probably effective to some people. Right. Think about Nazi Germany hosting the Olympics. Yeah, think about the 1930 World Cup that happened, I think, in Italy when, like, fucking Mussolini, Mussolini. <laughs> was in power. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Jesse Owens won the gold at Nazi in, in Nazi Germany? Yeah, I don't think I remember that. You remember that? that? Specifically, because I don't think the, I was remember alive historically. For that. <laughs> remember historically. But, I, yeah, I do think I remember reading that uh, in a Wikipedia article. It's a article beautiful once. historical moment. Mm -hmm. A beautiful, beautiful historical moment in, in a very dark time. Yeah. Um, Qatar have a terrible record when it comes to freedom of expression. They criminalize speech that criticizes the wrong folks, like anybody who's in power, like their, ooh, what is it called? Emir? E-M-I-R. Amir. Yeah, Amir. Amir. Um, anything that's considered blasphemous against Islam or, get this, anything considered fake news. What is the criteria <gasps> for fake news? Ooh, what's fake news? Who, who dictates that? Because oh, I'm don't so have, triggered. If you don't have Elon Musk uh, going through your content and telling you if it's real or fake, who's going to do that for you? Who will do it for me? <laughs> uh, it's it's usually you for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a different conversation for another day. We'll talk in the car. <laughs> so these restrictions have all been weaponized to punish critics and silence anyone who decides to speak out. So they've targeted independent journalists who travel to the country to report on the working conditions of the migrant laborers, specifically that we talked about. Um, there's also massive restrictions on the journalists who are traveling there for the World Cup, like you called out. Uh, journalists who have been given the green light, like especially by FIFA, to they, be there. They have a FIFA-issued media pass, yeah. which gives them, yeah. as was agreed in the, the, the contract between FIFA and Qatar, along with other things that have gone the wayside and have been put down since this whole thing started, full reign to record and report. Mm -hmm. There was a Sky, mm -hmm. Sports, uh, I'm sorry, a, a Sky Sports reporter from Denmark reporting, and literally as he was recording was being harassed and attacked by yep. 
un unknown people mm -hmm. about recording at the yep. grounds of the FIFA World Cup. Yeah. And was saying, you welcomed us here. Why are you doing this to us? Yeah, you can fucking pay me to, to be a reporter and cutter for the World Cup right now. I just watched a video from Reddit. It was a Brazilian FIFA licensed like recorder, like was there to report and film and show what was happening at the Qatar World Cup. He brought his his like state's flag, kind of like Illinois has our state flag. Mm -hmm. He brought his Brazilian's location flag. So it wasn't the flag of Brazil. It was his region of Brazil. Mm -hmm. And guess what was on it? What? A rainbow. Oh, no. So what happened to him? Did he go to jail? No, he was attacked. Oh. He was attacked and he recorded the whole thing. Amazing. And the individuals who were... Um, harassing him, then stole his phone and forced him to remove it. But thankfully, someone else was recording him being harassed. Um, but you can see it plain as day. Uh, they thought he was carrying a, a gay pride flag because it's, because there yeah. was a fucking rainbow on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting because for those who don't uh, see the setup that we have, which is everybody because we don't record a uh, video of us doing our podcasts. Matt doesn't have any of my notes up, um, but you are leading very well into my next uh, part of this, which is getting into human rights violations. Yeah. Despite not watching the world cup, I'm, I'm keeping a very really close eye on everything else. Um, Qatar have been criticized by international human rights groups for, more than a decade, decades, um, for their laws that curtail the rights of women and LGBTQ plus people. And though the World Cup organizers promised that everyone would be welcome, in quotes, including LGBTQ plus fans, it's clear that that's obviously not the fucking case. Clearly. <laughs> um, so one example of that Seven captains of European nations had planned to wear the One Love armbands. For those who are not wanting to look it up or unfamiliar um it's, it's captains within soccer just like wear armbands. like any sport yep. but but in so as opposed to like wearing like, like a c on your jersey like many american sports in in soccer you have like an armband yeah which indicates you being the captain that gives yep. you the ability to talk to the ref more even though in soccer everyone everyone, everyone talks yells to the at ref. the ref <laughs> um in its in its nature, the captain is like the leader of the team yeah. and, and the one who might deal with the referee more commonly than the other 10 players on the field. This armband in particular had um, a heart on it that was filled with, uh, I believe, a rainbow flag. A rainbow flag, yes. And LGBTQ plus uh, rights activists and campaigners condemned FIFA's threats to impose sanctions on players who wear the One Love armbands at the World Cup. Uh, so England, Wales, and the five other European nations confirmed that their players will not wear the armband, saying that the football governing body had made it clear that their captains could be booked or forced to leave the pitch if they did so. So, for example, captains could receive an automatic yellow card for wearing those armbands, which is insane. Uh, but on the flip side of that, uh, there's a lovely uh, professional, former professional footballer and uh, pundit, Alex Scott. Uh, she's uh, currently an English sports presenter, and that's what she's there in, in Qatar doing. She wore the One Love uh, rainbow armband as she presented coverage of England's first match, which was amazing. Um, her decision came hours after the England and Wales teams decided not to follow suit because they were informed that players could receive yellow cards for breaching FIFA's clothing rules, which is so fucking stupid. Correct. Very, very um, appreciated, bold, bold, brave move Yeah, from her. Yeah. Um, FIFA also denied the Belgium soccer team's request to wear an away jersey with a love label inside the collar combined with a rainbow color trim on the shirt. Um, the design was inspired by the fireworks of Belgium's famous music fest Tomorrowland. It stands for diversity, equality, and uh, inclusivity. And uh, FIFA, um, you know, forced a change and Belgium had to stick with their traditional red home shirts. Yeah, I was I was just reading up on 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 that whole fiasco about their um, second kit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 
Uh, there were also instances of Welsh fans who wore rainbow bucket hats with the Welsh crest on it. Um, they were told they needed to remove the hats because of the rainbow bucket uh, um, pattern on it. Um, the hats were initially confiscated from women only. <laughs> and not men uh but then everyone lost their hat in the end um yeah so that's fucking cool so i just wanted to make a note if you're in the u.s and you're like oh this rainbow flag is offensive to me because of gay people you're essentially putting yourself in the same bucket of people in cutter who uh would actually jail two men for uh being in a relationship together in public so congratulations you're an asshole (laughs) And that's what I'll say about that. Less serious than human rights violations, but shows how FIFA bends to Qatar's rules and like probably isn't actually in charge of anything in Qatar anymore at this point. I think it's pretty fucking clear. Um, Up until Friday, November 18th, two days before the start of the tournament, there were planned beer sales in the stadiums. Right. Budweiser Budweiser is one of the largest sponsors of the World Cup. Yeah. And to be clear... It's not like there's no alcohol allowed in Qatar at all. It's just very restricted sales. So, for example, you may have to go to like an upscale uh, bar hotel or something like that for specific drinks. Um, So Budweiser is a longstanding World Cup sponsor. They're the official beer of the tournament. They would have been available to fans during specific times in the stadiums in like discrete locations. Um, So I don't think... I can't I can't remember the original timeline, but the the last timeline that I remember is that um, beer sales would be allowed in the stadiums for like four hours before the match and mm-hmm. then like two hours after the match, but That's not correct. during the match, correct. which I don't think is insane because there's a lot of stadiums in Europe that around the don't world allow. That yeah, don't, just because of hooliganism. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I don't think that would have been crazy. Um but now it's not available in any stadium at all to any capacity, um, unless <laughs> you're in a luxury stadium suite that's reserved for FIFA officials or other wealthy guests. And then you get some of the, the top shelf good stuff, not but, Budweiser. <laughs> but you know what? Have you seen the... So at the end of every match, there's a player of the game award given to a player you know who has like the best performance. It's a Budweiser trophy. It's literally... Is it really? Yes. The Man of the Match trophy is a Budweiser trophy. So they're still getting those. So you're still getting your 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 appearance. Um, the number escapes me. Clearly, I'm not good with numbers because I of that number from earlier in the episode. Um, but Budweiser, since having to deal with this ban on, on sales... Um, is giving the entire boatload of beer to the winning country. Yeah, good luck. As well as a fat lawsuit to FIFA. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. failure to yeah. to follow through on their promises. Yeah, well, because, like, for the record, FIFA has a $75 million sponsorship agreement with Budweiser. And Budweiser, after that announcement was reversed, or, or after the announcement was was. Uh, put out and then the rules were reversed Budweiser tweeted well this is awkward dot 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 and then deleted it like an hour and a half later which is fucking hilarious there's a picture (laughs) there's a picture of the like how is that like a factory floor of all of the cases of beer it's massive yeah if I drank one Budweiser every half hour for the rest of my life I don't think I would get through that beer no I don't think you would either no, definitely not. Would I die so happy? Can, yeah. Not probably <laughs> no, be happier Budweiser. if it was Guinness. Probably be happier if it was Guinness, but but yeah. Not um, not not supporting uh, Budweiser, but yeah. like it was part of the contract. Yeah, it was exactly. part of the contract. That's I and I think that's the big the big issue with it. Uh you could still buy Budweiser Zero. Zero. I yeah, oh yeah, called, absolutely. absolutely. It's it's all the flavor. None of the alcohol. None of the fun. <laughs> no, it's yeah. Uh, So just a a quote here from FIFA. Following discussions between host country authorities and FIFA, a decision has been made to focus the sale of alcoholic beverages on the FIFA Fan Festival, other fan destinations, and licensed venues. The decision, it said, would require removing sales points of beer from Qatar's 
FIFA World Cup 2022 stadium perimeters, which also means that um, it, it sounds like they started replacing their like red tents with like white tents to be more discreet. <laughs> uh, and like any, I mean, because Budweiser's branding is red. So like, it, it fucking makes sense. Um, yeah. So it's only day two. Uh, welcome to the fucking show. Oh, it is only day two. It feels like it's been like a month already. Maybe it's day three when you listen to this of the World Cup and there's like almost an entire month of the tournament. and Or potential. seven yeah. or eight or ten. Yeah. However, and however it's, it's already over, yeah. possibly. Who won? Maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let us know. I bet it's Brazil. Yeah. There Australia, you go. You're, you're a little bit ahead. I'm still... I, I I'm I'm still thinking like maybe France has a shot. I would love some sort of upset. Um, USA. Yeah, no. That's what U- I'm hearing. I'm hearing U- USA. USA is if if US makes it out of the fucking group stage, I would be absolutely shocked. I'd be completely shocked. So I'm not hopeful. Do you have any other World Cup predictions you'd like to share and put out into the eth- ethos ether? Ether. Um. No. Yeah, I was gonna I, say sorry. I'm really putting you on the spot here. I I predict there will be a handful, if not two handfuls, maybe a baker's dozen more events that slip through the cracks to uh, expose the wrongs that are being done in the World Cup this year. I don't give a shit about who wins. Um. I've been so sad about this. Yeah. It's it's been yeah, it's been hard. Well, because even we didn't get into it, but the 2018 Russia World Cup was also nothing to like feel really good about. These have not exactly. These have not been feel good events. Which yeah. I think the nature of the game, the like people's game. Yes, it's the simplest sport to play. Yeah, you need a ball. Yep. Yeah. And in places, or, in places wait, around sorry, the world, if you're in the U.S., you also need a shitload of money from your parents. Oh yeah, everywhere else play, though, you're fine. <laughs> pay to play is pretty fucked. Um, it's the world's game. It's the simplest game. You need a ball, and I would say other countries that just you just use garbage on the street or a can. Mm-hmm. You just you just kick the ball and you work together. Yeah. And 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 the game's been stolen by the elite. Yeah. Uh, another example of how the super elite are just taking steaming dumps on the common people mm-hmm. when the people who who play the sport at the pro level like look at their backgrounds how many of them came from like war torn countries mm-hmm. or from the like favelas of Brazil mm-hmm. or from like the streets of <laughs> any country they come from like the poor mm-hmm. are the ones who who build the sport and make it great and it's 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 being corrupted it's it's been corrupted mm-hmm. it is corrupt it's been ruined by by the super elites who Corp- just corporate greed yeah it's horrendous it's horrendous i'm 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 very bitter about it but i'm just yeah yeah i'm just some guy from <laughs> from america who has a pretty comfortable life yeah i think we're still allowed to be sad about it I think I think it's depressing because especially I think the case of Argentina and Saudi Arabia today, you could see what it meant to those fucking fans and to the players. And that is what the entire sport is about. And it's sad to me that moments like that, like one of the greatest upsets in World Cup history are being overshadowed by um, just the how human rights corrupt- violations yes. that have occurred. Yes. Since to get to this point, yeah. Since 2010. I mean, yeah. it goes even, yeah. even back further well than that. Well beyond that, but yeah. And it's it's only going to get worse yeah. as as a confederation, sorry, as a federation. It's only going to get worse yeah. with with FIFA. Um, should we talk about Infantino's heart, oh, heart-wrenching speech? Should, yeah, we, should we talk I, about that? I actually forgot to include notes about that um, for oh. this. But yeah, if you, would, when, if you would like to go into it, uh, sure. I'll sit when, back. When when the out of touch rich try and sound woke, <laughs> it's cringe as fuck. So uh, Infantino, j- just for visual, he's a bald white guy. Um, he's talking about how how he understands those people who are in lit- in in literal danger of going to Qatar to enjoy the world sport. Uh, danger for their lives 
he says he says growing up I had red hair and freckles and I understand it was like to be bullied so comparing schoolyard bullying for being a ginger which I <laughs> For the for the record, for the record, I am a ginger. Comparing it to the life threatening danger that that uh, LGBTQ plus people are going through, that black people are going through, for being there. Even women, let's be clear. Even absolutely, even women, because Cutter. Um, created this like what not to wear sort of guide and uh the dress code for both men and women is that you have to wear clothing that covers your shoulders and your knees um but for women it's much more harshly criticized uh and so pretty much unless you are like not a straight man uh you're probably not having the best time yeah so like Infantino, who is like Swiss Italian, uh, is is trying to like make this heart wrenching uh, claim. He's like, today I am Qatari, today I am gay, today I am African. It's so uh, fucking cringe. T- today I I am exceptionally wealthy and and, <laughs> and and corrupt and should lose my head for this job. Yeah, his his net worth is millions um he does probably not have any idea what a gallon of milk costs these days that's, so. a, that's a good way of putting it yeah 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 no i'm uh yeah i'm 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 beside myself with guilt grief anger about the world cup and i i like i know that the u.s as well as canada mexico are hosting the next one uh but i just want to see how like how how low can this go yeah. How low can we get? Yeah. This is like Hunger Games. This is yep. this is this is the most prolific showing of the wealthy stepping on, mm-hmm. crapping on the poor and impoverished who literally die to build this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, and their families for, received nothing in return. For the people who who are not like accepted over there, like it's it's it's, it's the most insane thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like a microcosm of all the issues in the world, but mm-hmm. we don't have time for this and, and I'm not paying you for my time <laughs> like my therapist. So, uh, that's a $20 copay. For oh, today. How would you, how would, how would you like right. to, uh, how would you like to pay that today? Um, I have an Amazon gift card. Yeah. Uh, save that for the IRS. <laughs> yeah. Because I also like to make those people, bring me things in boxes that I yeah. ordered uh, an hour beforehand yeah. and make them yeah. send it to me on rush. Cause it's free prime. Yeah. Yeah. Slave labor of a different kind. Yeah. yeah. If, if we don't stop this pod soon, I'm going to go off we're, the deep end. Yeah. We're so. never, we're never going to stop. So, uh, all of that to say there's, so many links in the show notes uh, for your reading pleasure if you'd like to go in a, down a rabbit hole if uh, you even made it this far in the podcast. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Maybe we do like a follow up after the World Cup to kind of sum everything up to see if there's anything that happened. I Obviously, we won't just have an episode that's like, nothing happened. Bye. See you next week. Uh, <laughs> only if it's really worth uh, everyone's time. But that's that's it. I'd be curious to know how many people are watching the World Cup, how many people um, are watching maybe with heavy hearts and con- confliction. And yeah. 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 I, so even clicking the button to turn a game on for a coworker hurt my heart. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yep. Well. All right, I'm I'm cutting us off here. Cut it off. I'm, I'm, cu- I'm, I'm cutting go, us off here. I'm gonna go down a deep <laughs> rabbit hole in a second here. So, thanks so much for joining us today. We will see you at some point next week, and uh, hope you have a great Thanksgiving week for everybody who's uh, in America. Yeah, football belongs to the people. Absolutely. And uh, go go kick a ball. Yep. Go go kick a ball. Go touch some grass. <laughs> okay. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>